Coming to you from deep inside the bowels of a great big empty. Get ready for another episode of The Home Defense Show with Skip Coriel. Hello, American families. Welcome to this week's episode of The Home Defense Show. I'm your host, Skip Coriel. And if you love your family, care about them deeply, and want to learn how to protect them in every facet of your life, then you've come to the right place. Man, we got a great show for you guys today. It is just awesome. We're going to have Gabe Suarez from Suarez International. He'll be on the show. This is our 100th episode. Can you believe it? It's been like two years since I've been doing this uh, podcast. I didn't know it was going to be this long. I didn't know I was going to have this much fun, but I definitely am, and it's been fantastic. So, episode 100 for the Home Defense Show with yours truly, Skip Coriel. Uh, in segments two and three, of course, we'll have Gabe Suarez. We're going to be talking about shooting people in the back, the uh, moral and legal aspects of that, plus also shooting to wound and warning shots. We're going to see what Gabe from Suarez International thinks uh, about all of that. Uh, but before we get started with that, I have a special guest co-host on the air today. Her name is Amethyst Coriel. Amethyst, welcome to the Home Defense Show. Hi. Thanks for having me on the show, Dad. All right. Well, Amethyst, thanks for coming on the show. Now, we had a special experience just a few days ago. We took you to uh, Walmart and we bought you your apprentice, your mentoring apprentice hunting licenses, didn't we? Yeah. And that was your first time, wasn't it? Yeah. And they printed you out a whole bunch of hunting uh, tags and licenses that you could use. What are some of the animals that you can shoot this year? Um, turkey um, and rabbits, squirrels, and deer. That's a lot of animals. I, I think you are going to fill up our freezer with food all by yourself. What do you think? Probably not that much. <laughs> okay, well, I tell you what. I promise I will help you fill the freezer, okay? Okay. All right, so now, Daddy took you out hunting, and uh, you were carrying a, a twenty two semi-automatic rifle, which was an awesome choice for you. First, we practiced. We went over the safety rules. You never point the gun at, any, at another person, right? Yeah. And uh, you keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot, correct? Yes. But then we did some practice, and what did you hit? Um, we, I hit a um, bottle. A water bottle, that's right. And you hit it really good, too. That water bottle is just dead as a doornail. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then we dressed you up in, in hunter orange to follow the law, and we walked back the trail... Uh, all the way back to the stream, and then as we were crossing the, the bridge, what did we see off in the woods? We saw big turkeys. How many of them was there? There was like five of them. Five turkeys! And then, then what did you do? Um, we tried to sneak up on them, but they were really fast. And <laughs> yeah. They ran away. Yeah. They were fast, weren't they? Yeah. <laughs> You know, if they could have just stopped running just for one second, I think you could have got a good shot off. <laughs> well, they're still back there. Shall I take you uh, turkey hunting again? Yeah! All right. Okay, well, Amethyst, Mom says I can only have you for five minutes. you got to get back there and do some homeschooling. But thank you very much for being on the Home Defense Show. Thank you. All right. I love you, sweetheart. You get back into Mommy. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. All right, folks. You know, I got to tell you, it was so utterly cute and fun to take my seven-year-old daughter uh, hunting. You know, we got 20 acres here. I, I took her behind the house, down to the creek, and we saw those five turkeys. And it was so funny and cute to watch her try and sneak up on these turkeys. And if you've ever been turkey hunting... You know, it's really hard to sneak up on turkeys. They got pretty good eyesight. But she had a good time, and I thought, hey, what the heck? Maybe she'll get lucky. 
She didn't. But, you know, to be honest with you, I have more fun taking my kids hunting than I do actually hunting myself. And I have a lot of fun hunting myself. Which brings me to the next order of business. I told you, uh, oh, several weeks ago, I, I've got to shoot four deer uh, to fill up the, both the freezers and get ready for uh, 2019. And hey, I've got one deer down and three to go. I had a nice big doe come in. Uh, I think it was uh, a m- Monday. I had a, a doe come in. Uh, she was about 130 pounder, not big, but she was mature. And boy, she she made me work for this because she came in from behind me. I had to get situated around, bring my crossbow up. And then her head snapped up and she looked right at me. It's like she was staring right into my soul and she had me dead to right. She knew I was there and she was facing towards me. So all I'm looking at is her head, her, her neck, her throat and her chest. And I thought, I just, I got to wait for her to turn. I got to wait for her to turn. And she would not turn. And when she started stomping her, her foot, I've been in enough staring contest with a mature doe to know that you don't win those contests. If they know you're there, they're <laughs> the next step they take is usually running away. And boy, I've got limited time to hunt. So I thought, you know, I'm going to take this deer. So I, I got the safety off, and I put the cross here. I've got a good uh, crossbow. It is a uh, Excalibur Vortex, 330 feet per second, 200-pound draw on it with a 20-inch bolt, 150-grain broadhead, and, uh, man, it packs a lot of punch. I have shot crossbow bolts lengthwise through deer and had them stuck uh, six inches into the, into the dirt afterwards. So a lot of power. A lot of stopping power, a lot of good kinetic energy in that crossbow. So I went ahead and I shot this deer while she was looking right at me. I hit her in the throat, went down 16 inches into the rib cage, and uh, got one lung, uh, uh, some good uh, blood vessels. And boy, she ran, a, she ran about 100 yards. But man, she had a blood trail like you would not believe. Of course, she ran in the wrong direction, so I had to, that was part of my workout program, right? Dragging a 130-pound deer, you know, through a thicket, through the thickest of the swamp. And uh, so, hey, I got one deer down, I got three to go, I can get one more doe and two bucks. And who knows, maybe Amethyst will help me and I won't have to hunt so hard. But I will be out there again this afternoon. As soon as it gets done raining here, I'll head on out there and see if I can get another buck or another doe for the freezer. I made some good jerky. Let me tell you my my jerky recipe here. I I like to use the, uh, you know, the jerky gun. And I first I do a coarse grind on the meat. Then I do a fine grind because it makes it, oh, just a a lot nicer to, to eat. And, boy, I'll put in ketchup, of course, the salt cure, brown sugar. Uh, I chopped up some ginger and put that in there. And then garlic. I put in garlic as well. And then I put in some finely chopped onions, uh, some turmeric and some paprika. And I mixed it all up really, really good with my hands. I stuck it in the uh, jerky gun and uh, put it in the dehydrator. I got it. I got to tell you, it was really, really good. The kids absolutely loved it. Uh, it's already gone. Just after a few days, they had uh, we'd made about ten pounds, and it's gone already. I made about half of it uh, with jalapenos. The same recipe, but I added uh, sliced up jalapenos uh, quite a bit, and it is hot and spicy and good. And you eat that stuff out on stand, and it keeps you warm while you're sitting uh, up there in the cold. But hey, try that recipe out. Um, Really, really good stuff. Maybe I'll uh, put it on the website. Okay, what else? Oh, weight loss. Uh, One of the things I talk about with Gabe Suarez today is uh, weight loss, uh, physical fitness. I've been working out. Um, I've been on this diet for uh, 30 days now. 
and I have lost eight pounds. I went from 192 to 184. Again, my goal, my target weight is 175, the same weight I had when I was in boot camp. So stay tuned for more of that because we know a healthy, fit person is harder to kill than a fat, chubby, flabby person. Okay. Well, let's get right into the news. I think we got time for one news item here. Ah, uh, here we got BearingArms.com, self-proclaimed looter, shot and killed in Panama City. That would be Florida after Hurricane Michael. Right now, I'm a little sensitive when it comes to the topic of looting. After all, my hometown was devastated by Hurricane Michael. Uh, this would be uh, Tom Knighton. We've had him on the show before from BearingArms.com. We didn't get it as bad as some places, but we got hammered pretty good. If you wondered why there wasn't a lot of content on Thursday, it's because I had no power to write anything. Now that I'm somewhere I can, though, the idea of someone taking stuff during a disaster infuriates me. However, I get a nice chuckle knowing someone thought of stealing a police car in the wake of Hurricane Michael and that, and that they got shot at for doing it. Witness Landon Sweat said a man tried to steal a police car. Quote, he yelled at me a little bit. He said, oh, I'm looting. And he opened the door to the police officer's SUV with the lights going up. Got in it and shut the door, said Sweat. That's when Sweat took his family to safety. Moments later, shots were fired. <laughs> yeah, good idea to get out of Dodge, huh? According to the Florida Highway Patrol, a Florida state fire marshal was involved in the shooting. Looting is rampant in other areas. Residents said broken doors and shattered windows are all that's left of many businesses as looters are on the prowl. Quote, this hit so hard and so fast that the different aspects of human nature is going to come out and people are going to do anything to survive, said Christopher Donahue. You know what? I don't think it has a lot to do with survival going out and looting. I think that's a crime of opportunity. And some people are just prone to that. When the cops are not there, when emergency services aren't running anymore, Hey, that's when someone's true character comes out, or in this case, lack of character or bad character. Panama City is currently under a dusted on curfew to try and reduce the amount of looting taking place. The looter didn't survive the encounter, which is hardly something for me to weep over. Right about now, there are probably people who are willing to bust into places to steal water or food. But I'm sure there are relief supplies in Panama City, just as they are in my town. Now, my first thought when I saw the National Guard had brought in MREs for people was, haven't we suffered enough? <laughs> I believe Tom was in the Navy. Uh, you know, Navy guys should not complain about the chow. Uh, you guys got really good food, Tom. I, I know I've I had it in the Marines. And MREs, meal ready to eat, heck of a lot better than the old sea rations from uh, 1975. Yet it's food. It negates the need to bust in windows and take people's stuff. So when someone turns to loot, it's probably because they're too lazy to stand in line to get their share of relief supplies. You know, I think he's right. When someone turns to loot a police car, though, it's practically begging for law enforcement to add a little chlorine to the gene pool. <laughs> Looters who do things so colossally stupid, sometimes they deserve whatever happens at that point. But let's also be realistic. This is theft, plain and simple. While I can shrug off someone taking food and water when there's no relief available, anyone taking anything else or stealing when help can be had gets no sympathy from me. Right now, my friends, family, and neighbors have to maintain a constant vigilance because of people like this, and so, it, so if one gets shot, so be it. The only emotion I'll show is a chuckle at evolution taking place right before our eyes. All right, that'll probably make uh, you know the top ten dumbest criminals in the world and who knows this guy may even uh win a darwin award and he he certainly earned it okay folks we are out of time for this segment of the home defense show when we come back in segment two of course we are going to have gabe suarez from suarez international we'll be talking about shooting people in the back is it legal is it moral and we'll also talk about the advisability of warning shots and shooting to wound Okay, we got a two-minute break. While we're away, go ahead and check out our sponsors, firearmslegal.com slash Midwest Tactical, and then go to elitefirearms.us. This is Skip Coriel on Home Defense Show. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. My name 
the Siege of Coriel. Welcome to the Home Defense Show with my dad, Skip Coriel. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. This is Skip Coriel from the Home Defense Show, and I want you to have the very best handgun that money can buy. And that's why we recommend you visit Larry Jackson at Elite Firearms and Training. As a concealed carry instructor, I see people every week out on the range with guns they can't shoot properly because they didn't know what to buy. That will never happen at Elite Firearms and Training. Larry Jackson will personally fit you with your very own personal defense pistol. So call Larry Jackson today at 616-299-8715 or visit EliteFirearms.us. This is Colonel Danny Gillum. I host Front Lines of Freedom, a weekly syndicated military talk radio show. One of my co-hosts is Skip Coriel, the host of this show. We cover things that impact military and veteran communities, and we do it from the veteran's perspective. The show is broadcast across the nation and is also available as a podcast on our website, frontlinesoffreedom.com. Please join Skip and me weekly on Frontlines of Freedom. Okay, folks, welcome back to the Home Defense Show. This is your host, Skip Coriel. We are speaking uh, today with one of my favorite trainers in the whole wild world, uh, Gabe Suarez from Suarez International. Gabe, welcome to the Home Defense Show. Thanks, Skip. My pleasure as always. Now, Gabe, you know, part of the reason uh, I like talking to you so much, uh, you know, one, you're a great guy, okay, but two... You just don't, you just don't sugarcoat things. It's, you just, uh, you just tell it the way it is, and you're not very politically correct. Uh, am, am I, am I, uh, right on that, or am I totally off base? Well, so, no, you're right. And look, my job is to be a teacher, okay? And, uh, it's, it's not my job to, if you're making, if, you, if you're doing something that's not optimal, it's not my job to, to reinforce that. It's my job to tell you, what I think is the best way to do this and to back it up with, you know, proof and justification and so on. Um, but I, I, unfortunately I don't see a lot of people in the training world doing that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think a little bit of bluntness, uh, is certainly, uh, okay. And I, I know you're not rude, you know, and go, Hey, Hey, idiot, third from the left. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. We, we don't do that. We don't yeah, do pull that. your head out of your sphincter there and nah, uh, remember how to shoot. That. Well, one of the things that I that I wanted to talk to you about, uh, Gabe, is uh, you had an article uh, uh, came out. Uh, I think it was like two weeks ago, and it was it was back shooting. And uh, boy, boy, if I if I want to get into any kind of controversy in any of my concealed carry classes, I just talk about you know shooting people in the back. Can you talk about some of the? I guess some of the column, the common uh, misconceptions uh, about back shooting. It's like, you know, if you shoot someone in the back under any circumstances, you know, do not pass go, do not collect two hundred dollars, you go straight to jail. Talk about that for a second. Right. Well, that's, that's simply not true. There's there's plenty of circumstances, uh, you know, where that's justified. Um, you know, one specifically. Uh, and this is something that we, we, we learned a lot about back in, uh, in my law enforcement days, back when dinosaurs roamed the earth. Uh, and you know, we saw it happen time and time again. A bad guy is pointing a gun at you, you draw your own pistol, you know, and, uh, as the pistol's coming from, uh, you know, the, the, the holster to point, you know, as, as you start working on the trigger, uh, you know, the bad guy has a change of heart and decides to turn around and run away. Well, you know, when you pressed, he was facing you. By the mm-hmm. time that that action was concluded and the bullet found its mark, he had had a change of heart. Things do happen that quickly. Uh, and uh, so that happens quite a bit. It happened, you know, back in the day quite a bit. Um, the, the, uh, the other issue is a proactive engagement where the bad guy is about to kill an innocent. Uh, you know, you see these a lot in active shooter events where somebody sees the bad guy's back, uh, and, uh, you know, if he's armed, of course, you know, he can, he can take action and prevent him from killing anybody else. Uh, so it, it, there's plenty of justification for it. I think that, uh, a lot of the, the gun world, uh, again, I've said this before, and it's actually uh, created a new line of training courses that I think are going to be crucial to the industry. 
uh, the, the whole gun training world is all based on fear. They're afraid of everything. They're afraid of the bad guy. They're afraid of the police. They're afraid of it. It's, it's not that bad, and it's not something that is going to lead to them prevailing in their engagements. Yeah. Well, I guess the, the number one rule, or certainly goal for me, is you have to actually survive the gunfight in order to get into court, or, or else it doesn't matter. Yeah, you know, and, and the thing that's that's true, that's true. Um, but uh, just because you 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 kill a bad guy, okay, that's doing bad things, it doesn't mean automatically that you're going to get arrested and you're going to go to court and all this kind of stuff. There's a whole industry that wants you to believe that, and it's just not true. Why do you think that is? Is it just to get money, or do they ha- just have a different point of view? Are they wusses? What what is it? No, you know, I, I think, I, look, every, every, every endeavor has an agenda, you know, and there are people that are uh, fear mongers and, and, and liability mongers and, and everything else. Look, I'm all about being prepared. I'm all about having an attorney as a friend and, and all of that sort of thing. But, uh, uh, you know, I think we talked about this last time, you know, with our, uh, our uh, killing within the law class, you know, it actually, it's yeah. actually morphed into a, a category of classes called after the last bang, <laughs> you know, uh, signifying after, after the last shots fire, well now what, you know, and, and, uh, you know, we have one that deals with managing the first police contact, the interview and, uh, investigation management, um, you know, and so there's about three in the class and they're all taught by former law enforcement, former or current law enforcement, uh, guys that have had investigative uh, uh, backgrounds of one form or another. And, uh, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a very good class. It puts people in the right perspective. If you get listed as a victim in the report, which you will if you use your words, uh, you're not going to get arrested. You're not going to go to court. You know, when's the last time a victim went to court? <laughs> yeah, that's it, it just doesn't happen. Yeah. Okay. You know, so <clears throat> the idea is to get listed as a victim. And in order to do that, we have that uh, that flow chart that I've written about, um, which uh, in essence it's a it's a mental flow chart or a mental kata that uh, you know that you you go through. It basically becomes a part of your thinking, and uh, you always know when you are uh, correct to act or when you shouldn't act because it's part of the thought process. Yeah, and you don't have to have this. Uh, you know, this spastic, oh, my God, what will I do now kind of thing, because you always know where you stand. Yeah, you know, and I think people should spend more time with those mental exercises uh, because, you know, they'll go out on the range and they'll shoot 50, 100 rounds a month or something, you know, which they they should be doing. But if you don't know Mm -hmm. when you're allowed to use that gun, uh, boy, you're going to have this startle response that's about 10 seconds long, and that pretty much uh, gives the bad guy the upper hand. But, if you know, if you've got it down so well <clears throat> that you can name a situation, mm-hmm. a scenario, because all self-defense is scenario-based, and uh, you can know immediately, yes, I, yes, I'm legally justified, or no, I'm not, that mm-hmm. takes away mm-hmm. a sure, lot absolutely. of self-doubt, you know. Um, absolutely, absolutely. It gives you certainty of action because you don't have to have this dialogue with yourself. Uh, and then, and then it also, uh, you know, sometimes you see, you see guys, you see in the law enforcement world too, because, you know, they're, they're victims to the same mindset sometimes, uh, that the CCW world is, you know, and they wait and they wait and they wait and they wait. Well, during all that time, you know, they could have either disengaged or they could have taken the initiative. Yeah. Uh, and then by the time that they re- they realize, oh my God, I have no other option. Well, then it's already, uh, they're already either behind the, the, the reaction curve and they lose the fight or they try and catch up and they do more than they should. Yeah. Uh, and it's not, well, you don't, you don't have to do that. It's not necessary to, to take it to that point there. Uh, you can, you can certainly act, uh, with greater certainty, but you have to get your mind right about it. Yeah. You know, I think you and I have, uh, talked about this before on air, you know, uh, challenge commands. And, and I've seen videos where law enforcement officers have just given warning after warning after warning after warning, and mm-hmm. sometimes they die because they're just not, 
I guess it's like they're psychologically not ready to use deadly force, mm-hmm. or they just don't have yeah. it in their psyche, or they're afraid of the politics, yeah, or, or whatever. Right. Yeah, no, that's that's true. That's true. Um, you know, uh, and again, these are things that uh, you, you're not going to you're not going to get these these things answered and 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 squared away mentally by going and shooting 50 to 100 rounds a month. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Uh these are things that need to need to be learned in a lecture format where you're sitting down and an instructor's taking you through how the material works, how the police investigation works, all that stuff. Uh you know, so you you have your your uh your your background uh squared away in terms of this is how these events proceed, you know, and then then you need to take it and work it in the force on force environment where uh you know you are in essence having a gunfight. Hmm. Uh you know, shooting a cardboard, you know, in, in a second and a half from the holster in response to a beep, that that's you know, that's that's neither here nor there. It's really got such little to do with you being successful in the fight. I mean, I could take a student, okay and you know maybe maybe him fire 100 rounds total so they know how their gun works but spend the majority of the time working force on force drills and then uh, a small part of time uh teaching them uh how to process information how to arrive at decisions and so on and they would be far better prepared for self defense than some guy that's you know shoots thousands of rounds every year yeah guaranteed yeah absolutely now gabe uh I have a question here. Well, first, before I get too far into it, we're almost out of time for this segment, but uh, what I wanted to tell you, uh, actually thank you, because you have been, you don't know this, uh, you know, we go through our lives and we think, oh gosh, you know, I'm not accomplishing anything, but then, but you don't know all the people that you're inspiring and that you're encouraging. And we did a segment a few months back on personal fitness, physical fitness, Mm-hmm. And you inspired me, and uh, boy, I have been uh, working out with weights, not heavy weights, you know, because I'm 61 years old, but, you know, uh, weights that, that I can handle, and I've been trying to lose weight, and in the last uh, 17 days, I am down six pounds now, and, uh, you know, it's in due largely to conversations that you and I have had. Uh, it just motivated me and helped me realize, okay, yeah, you, you're going to get old. You can't stop that, but you don't have to be uh, defenseless. You don't have to be helpless. You don't have to be weak just because you're getting a little long in the tooth. So I just wanted to throw that out there and uh, and thank you for that uh, motivation because, you know, what's that verse uh, verse in the Bible? I think it's in Proverbs. Uh, As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens yeah. another. Yeah. And, hey. You have Absolutely. sharpened me, so I just want to thank you for that, Gabe. Well, well, thank you very much, Skip. And, you know, by the way, you're not that much older than me. I just turned 58. <laughs> yeah, but so, you're in a lot better you know. shape than I am. But I, I'm, I'm nipping at your heels, Gabe. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. <laughs> okay, all right, folks. Well, we are about out of time for this segment of the Home Defense Show. When we come back, we're going to have uh, Gabe Suarez from Suarez International with us again. And I want to talk a little bit uh, more about this subject. I want to talk about warning shots and, and shooting to wound. And then maybe a little bit about red dot sights. So we got a two-minute break here. While we are away, go ahead and check out our sponsors. Go to firearmslegal.com slash Midwest Tactical. And then also go to elitefirearms.us. Okay, folks, this is Skip Coriel on Home Defense Show. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. Corey out on the Home Defense Show. Always use guns safely and wisely. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey, folks. I want to tell you about my book, Civilian Combat, the Concealed Carry Book. More and more people across the country are seeing the dangers in society and are deciding to carry concealed to protect themselves and their families. My new book lays it out step by step. It'll teach you how to protect and defend the ones you love. Get the benefit of 17 years of teaching experience and a lifetime of training for this important role in society and in your family. You can get civilian combat real easy. 
Just go to Amazon.com, search on Skip Coriel Civilian Combat, and it'll pop right up there. Don't put it off any longer. Get Civilian Combat, the concealed carry book by yours truly, Skip Coriel. Wouldn't it be wonderful if life was like the movies and the good guys always won? In today's world, if you're forced to use your firearm to protect yourself, you will need protection. Firearms Legal Protection is here for you. FLP provides you with seasoned, experienced attorneys that handle your criminal and civil matters as a result of you protecting yourself. FirearmsLegal.com provides its members with uncapped attorney's fees, bail bond protection, and coverage in all 50 states. We are not a reimbursement plan. You can access uncapped attorney's fees for as low as $10 a month. Firearms Legal members are provided with educational services, training videos, and access to our vast national attorney network. While you're protecting yourself, let Firearms Legal protect you. Listen up, folks. This is important. There are plenty of legal protection services out there, but none will protect you as well as Firearms Legal Protection. This is the one I use and the only one I recommend. Visit FirearmsLegal.com slash Midwest Tactical and protect your family now. Okay, folks, welcome back to the Home Defense Show. This is your host, Skip Correa. We are speaking with Gabe Suarez from Suarez International. You know, a man that I refer to as the Billy Badass of the firearms training community. So, uh, Gabe, uh, thanks for being on. Um, we were talking in the last segment about all people's hesitancy. And, and I know if someone is hesitant to shoot, if they have to figure out whether or not it's legal to shoot while a man is pointing at a gun at them, they are probably not going to survive or prevail or, you know, the best case scenario is they, they totally comply and they, they have to operate under the good graces of a man who's threatening to kill them. Um, yeah, yeah. But what's, what's the point then, right? <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. It's like, yeah, yeah, you look like a, a nice mugger to me. I don't think you're going to hurt me. That, that has never commu- computed to me. It just doesn't seem logical. No. Um, you know, but, you know, I teach all these, uh, basic level, uh, concealed carry classes where I get, I'll get, uh, you know, stay at home moms, I'll get factory workers, doctors, you know, uh, blue collar people, all walks of life, just, you know, regular Johnny Cupcake guys that come on in off the street and all they know about deadly force is what they've seen on television. And, uh, mm-hmm. boy, it seems like, you know, Holly world is not the same as the real world, and maybe Hollywood's, uh, right. you know, maybe giving us some some bad info here. Um, get, talk about uh, situations like warning shots and and shooting to wound. Uh, when is it okay? When is it not? When is it tactical? When is it wise? All of those different aspects. Okay, well, the first thing that I'll, I'll do is I'll tell you, you know, you can go on my well, my blog. It's accessed right off of my forum, warriortalk.com. Uh, and, uh, you can, you can access a, uh, a, an article. Actually, it's just, it's a, it's a diagram that we put up. The flow chart of justified deadly force. Uh, and, you know, feel free to use that if you find it valuable. Readers can do the same. Go on there, print it out, and keep it with you. Uh, and it's a very simple way to, to process the information that you're being provided, and you will end up at the bottom of the flow chart with either I am justified in using deadly force or I am not. Mm-hmm. And it's very simple, you know. And it starts out with, you know, do I have legal standing to be where I am? In other words, am I committing a crime? If you are, you're not justified in using <laughs> deadly force, okay? Uh, you know, but if you're not committing a crime, which I suspect most of our listeners and readers and students will not be, then you process the information through that. And you can, you can go through any of the controversial shootings that have happened in the last couple of years <clears throat> and process them through that information and you'll arrive at yes or no. And it's very simple. Uh, it's been reviewed by, uh, attorneys, a couple of judges actually, homicide investigators. Uh, and, you know, they've, they've all kind of said, yeah, this is pretty good, uh, you know, way to process information. So yeah. that's the first thing that, that I would say. Um, you know, on the, on the second one, you know, the, the issue of, of commands and warning shots and shooting to wound, there are places to, to give commands. If you don't have 
complete justification, but you have suspicion that you might have it pretty soon, uh, commands are okay. But the thing is that every time that you do that, you have to be clear in your mind, if I don't get compliance, I'm probably going to shoot. Yeah. You know? And, uh, if, if you, you know, if you're hesitant about that, you're putting yourself in a big problem because I've seen bad guys, accomplished bad guys, skilled bad guys, uh, you know, call people's bluff. And, you know, next thing you know, the bad guy is taking the gun away and the good guy's dead. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, that, that is what it is. Um, uh, shooting to wound, bad idea. If you're justified in shooting someone, you're justified in killing them and, uh, a wounded, uh, adversary is not a safe adversary. I, I'm sure that people that are listening that are hunters, you know, what would, would you rather do, wound the deer and have to <laughs> go after them? Or, or not even a deer. It's not the same analogy. Yeah. Uh, a bear or a mountain lion or something like that. You know, that doesn't make them less dangerous. It makes them more dangerous. Yeah, that's true. Uh, you know, so so there there's that. Uh, you know, and... Uh, uh, you know, warning shots, I think, are just a, a poor idea. That bullet is going to go somewhere. Uh, and, uh, you know, in an urban environment, more often than not, if it's fired, un, you know, undirected, it's going to go somewhere where you'd rather it hadn't gone. Yeah. Uh, so I don't remember a, any police agency that I have uh, worked with or worked in or, uh, you know, that I'm even aware of that uh, – thinks that warning shots are a good idea they're not that's a it's a, a a crazy notion from you know the old west or something like that so i it, i i would not advocate anybody use those under any circumstances yeah well you know what i always tell my my students is i always say okay yeah i i always fire a warning shot and uh, the first warning shot goes in the center of the upper chest and then the second warning shot goes mm-hmm. in the center of the upper chest and, and so on and so on. Mm-hmm. Repeat and, sure. until you get yeah. the desired results. But um, the whole shooting to wound thing, I mean, I had a lady in class once, and this happens quite often. You know, she'll, she'll, she raised her hand. She says, well, can I just shoot him in the kneecap? And uh, I said, I said, no, mm-hmm. you can't. And she says, well, why not? I said, well, number one, you're not good enough. You know, you're not a good enough shot to hit somebody in the kneecap. Oh, absolutely. Knee's gonna be absolutely. moving. Second, is, is there something magical about a kneecap where you hit them in the kneecap and they, and they say, oh, okay, yeah, they raise their hands, they drop the gun and say, okay, I give up, you hit me in the kneecap. You know, but I think the, the core behind that, the, the motivation for people to want to shoot to wound or want to take warning shots is they haven't solidified it in their own mind Mm -hmm. that they're legally justified in using deadly force. Sure, sure. Killing bad guys is okay, and it's legal under certain circumstances. Those are the circumstances where they're probably going to draw their pistols. Therefore, you're good to go. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, now, I, I like your flow chart. Uh, I've, I've seen it. I've studied it. Um, is it the kind of thing where if I uh, put it in my PowerPoint on my concealed carry class and I put there courtesy of Gabe Schwarz from Schwarz International, is it a copyright infringement? No, not at all. It's mine. Uh, you know, my staff and I worked on it. And uh, uh, listen, you know what? To whom much is given from them, much is required. And uh, so anybody that wants to use that, use it. You know, the only thing that, you know how this industry is, there's guys that will take that, they'll white out the copyright Suarez International, pretend they invented it and stuff. Yeah. You're not one of those guys, but there's guys like that out there. I don't want them to do that. But feel free to use the flow chart, but, you know, give us credit. That's, okay. that's the only thing. Yeah, that's not a problem, and I'd certainly do that anyways. But, you know, when when I think about that, there are some people um, that are pictorially uh motivated where they they can remember things mm-hmm. that they see as a picture and some people remember things as a text traditionally you right. know uh, you know use of deadly force when you can and when you can't is taught verbally with words and some people mm-hmm. they just don't process mm-hmm. information that way so that's why I like your flow chart right because it does both yeah yeah, they'll remember, they'll remember the way that the, the flow chart looks, what's on the right side, what's on the left side, how this works, you know, and that, that image will, will be there and, uh, you know, that they are in a situation there. Okay, here I go, you know, blah, 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 blah. And it's not designed to, 
get you to shoot the bad guy because there's plenty of situations where, okay, so this is where I'm at. Can I morally and tactically get away from this? You know, yes or no. Because uh, you know, that's always, it's always, you know, shooting bad guys, even, you know, it's, I mean, it's dangerous. And, you know, if, if you can avoid getting in the fight morally and tactically, it's always a good thing to do. Yeah. Uh, sometimes that's not possible, though. Okay. Uh, but it has that, it has that, that, uh, that side door there. You, you feel something's going to happen. Okay. You know, all right. You know, do I really need to stay here? No. Well, then let's get out. Uh, that's always a good policy, but there's times too when you know something's going to happen and you know, you can't get away because you're there with your kids, uh, you know, field trip, uh, someplace. Okay. And yeah, you can grab, you know, one kid and leave, but you know what? There's 30 others there. Right? Yeah. There's a moral requirement for people like us to not just run away. Mm-hmm. That in itself will justify you escalating and going to violence. Yeah. You know, one thing that that I've noticed uh, primarily from watching, you know, YouTube uh, videos of like gunfights and things uh, or any type of uh, a situation where someone is being hurt and you've got these people who are standing around watching and videotaping it and live streaming it on on Facebook or something like that. What does that say about our society? Yeah, that's the uh, the herbivore herd mentality. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, it's I. You know, I don't know. I mean, I I think we're we're kind of from the same generation, and there's a lot of things that I see today that I I don't really care for. I don't identify with. It's just not in my DNA. Yeah. But you know, that's that's the way things are, and I mean, you know, if if we could change things, we'd probably have a lot more money. Uh, <laughs> you know, but uh, it is it is what it is. Yeah. You know, that's. That is the way a lot of people view the world today. There, it's it's a, a culture of spectators. Yeah, well, that's that's kind of sad. That's sad in in my mind. I mean, when yeah. I when yeah. I was growing up, boy, if somebody was in trouble, it was a given. You stopped and you helped them. Now, I mean, you have to worry about okay, is this guy a drug dealer? Is he going to hurt me? Is it going to hurt my family? Or, you know, am I going to get in trouble for helping him? I mean, I, I have so many yeah. students. Well, you know, well, we, we talk, we talk about that too. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and, uh, we, you know, we talk about how to, how to profile, how to arrive at, you know, correct conclusions and, and, and things like that. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's like that one line in that, uh, that movie of Ronan. If there's any doubt, there is no doubt, you know. <laughs> uh, but look, you know, you see, you see the 80 year old woman being bullied by, you know, three, urban gang member thugs i you know what I, i'm not going to walk away from that that's yeah. that's my my spiritual duty to go and and protect that woman you know because uh, that's just wrong under anybody's circumstances yeah and you, um but uh you know one 25 year old beating up another 25 that's, that, that, that's not my problem yeah they're both <laughs> you know, stupid that's a whole different story <laughs> yeah or you know uh uh, some some situation where you know and you look at the people and you know you profile them a certain way, uh, you know this is thug on thug. It's got nothing to do with me. Yeah. Um, but we we cover that as well because that's important. That's mm-hmm. important to know. Yeah, it's like you have to be careful about who you risk your your life for. If if it's I mean there are some mm-hmm. things yeah. worth worth yeah. dying for, but not all things are worth uh, dying for yeah, or fighting true. for. That's true. Yeah. Um, now, now, Gabe, exactly. be, before we close this out, I wanted to talk to you uh, more about red dots, uh, because the vast mm-hmm. majority of uh, instructors do not deal with red dot sites, certainly not to the extent that you do. And uh, we, we did a whole sh- a show on red dot sites with you, and I was very impressed, mm-hmm. and I walked away thinking, okay, I've got to try that. Just last week, I was on the range, I was teaching an advanced class, and one of the students had a uh, red dot site, and it was uh, uh, an expensive one, uh, the Trijicon, uh, what, RMR2, I think, something like that. And mm-hmm. uh, he yeah. said, hey, you want to shoot it? And it's like, you know, is that a trick question? Of course I want to shoot that. And so, you know, mm-hmm. we, we hung up business cards, stapled them in the center, and we were at 75 feet. And uh, my thinking is, gosh, 
if I miss, I'm going to look like a total fool, you know, because I'm the instructor. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, I'd never shot that gun, um, and I'd never shot a red dot sight before, but I pulled up, and it's like I immediately found the, the dot. It was an amber, amber dot, mm -hmm. and I centered mm -hmm. it on the business card. I pressed the trigger, and that business card flew off because I had hit the, the staple. And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I'm looking around, uh, I turned, I looked at people and they have this look of awe on their face. And so, you know, me yeah. wanting to be honest, I said, well, what'd you expect? You know, of course I hit the staple, <laughs> 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 but I, I went ahead and I finished out the, the magazine. We go down there and, and there's just a cluster of, of bullet holes in a six inch circle from 75 right, feet. Right. And I got to be honest with you. Right. I have never ever done that before in my whole life with, with iron sights. Mm -hmm, never. Mm -hmm. w what's the difference? Yeah. Well, what uh you know there's a lot of components to shooting. Uh obviously you've got good trigger control. If you didn't, the red dot wouldn't have helped you as much. Um but what the red dot does is it eliminates the need for two of the fundamentals which are more and more difficult as our eyes age. Right, neither you nor I are, uh, would classify it for the whippersnapper category. <laughs> you got uh, it. You know, uh, and, and even so, there's a lot of younger guys that don't have perfect vision. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, what the red dot does, it eliminates the need for sight alignment and sight picture. Yeah, uh, those are two of the uh, the, the important uh, basics of marksmanship. Uh, cause you know, you only have one and it's there, the red dot and the target are both in the same, uh, visual focal plane. So there's no need for the eye to, you know, the eye muscles, which weaken as we get older or weaken with, uh, you know, just, uh, the, you know, the guys that don't have good vision, you know, you could be 15 years old and, and need to wear glasses, right? Yeah. Um, so it, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't require the muscles of the eye to shift focus back and forth. You just look at the target, you put the red dot on the target, and uh, if it's been installed correctly and zeroed and all that sort of thing, you're good to go. Uh, and uh, it's, I mean, we've been doing this since 2009, and um, it's it, back then it was a pretty heretical kind of a thing, but now it's becoming more mainstream. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's the top end to do this, and then there are, uh, you know, lesser, uh, quality technologies, uh, you know, not everybody can afford to put a $600 optic on, on a pistol. Um, you know, so there's, there's, there's other ones that, you know, they're, they're not as robust and they're not as, as, uh, as, as well developed and, and refined and so on, but you know, they'll still work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, I've always spent, uh, you know, what I had to spend, uh, you know, to protect my life and mm -hmm. the life of my kids. And I got to tell you, after, after shooting, I, I was sold on, on the, uh, the concept just after talking to you, mm -hmm. but after mm -hmm. actually doing it, it's like, okay, I have to, yeah. I have yeah. to do this, yeah. you know, because it, it just, it was a world of, of difference. So, Hey, yeah. Yeah. thanks again, boy. It's just, this is like, oh, uh, you know, thank you Suarez day. You know? Um, all right. Okay. Well, hey, Gabe, we are about out of time. But before we go, will you please tell people how they can get a hold of you and make use of all of your services? Sure. Uh, just uh, our our website is uh, SuarezInternational.com. That's my last name, S-U-A-R-E-Z, International.com. Uh, and then we've got uh, an internet forum where we, uh, we discuss a lot of these things. That's warriortalk.com. Uh, and, uh, we've got some new cool products coming out for, uh, you know, the, the holidays. One is, uh, a, a Glock 43. Uh, actually I rephrase that, a slide for a Glock 43 mm -hmm. that's now capable of accepting a Trigicon RMR. Uh, you know, as well as a few products for other pistols. We're doing something for the, the CZP10 now as well. Uh, and a few other things. So, you know, always, always onward, right? You know, developing and moving forward and refining. You bet. You bet. If you're still teaching the same thing the same way that you were 20 years ago, you're probably not growing, has always been uh, my opinion. Okay. That's true. Well, Gabe, thank you very much for being on the Home Defense Show. We appreciate it very much. Thanks, Gabe. My pleasure. 
Okay, folks, we got a two-minute break. Check out our sponsors, firearms.legal slash Midwest Tactical, and then also go to elitefirearms.us. When we come back in segment four, I'll be telling you what I really think. This is Skip Coriel on Home Defense Show. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. Welcome to my dad's home defense radio show. You're going to love it. Hey, folks. I want to tell you about my book, Civilian Combat, the Concealed Carry Book. More and more people across the country are seeing the dangers in society and are deciding to carry concealed to protect themselves and their families. My new book lays it out step by step. It'll teach you how to protect and defend the ones you love. Get the benefit of 17 years of teaching experience and a lifetime of training for this important role in society and in your family. You can get civilian combat real easy. Just go to Amazon.com, search on Skip Coriel Civilian Combat, and it'll pop right up there. Don't put it off any longer. Get Civilian Combat, the Concealed Carry Book, by yours truly, Skip Coriel. This is Colonel Danny Gillum. I host Front Lines of Freedom, a weekly syndicated military talk radio show. One of my co-hosts is Skip Coriel, the host of this show. We cover things that impact military and veteran communities, and we do it from the veteran's perspective. The show is broadcast across the nation and is also available as a podcast on our website, frontlinesoffreedom.com. Please join Skip and me weekly on Frontlines of Freedom. This is Skip Coriel from the Home Defense Show, and I want you to have the very best handgun that money can buy. And that's why we recommend you visit Larry Jackson at Elite Firearms and Training. As a concealed carry instructor, I see people every week out on the range with guns they can't shoot properly because they didn't know what to buy. That will never happen at Elite Firearms and Training. Larry Jackson will personally fit you with your very own personal defense pistol. So call Larry Jackson today at 616-299-8715 or visit EliteFirearms.us. Skip. Armed America time. Take us there, dude. All of us here at Frontlines of Freedom want our listeners to get trained and get armed in that order. We fully support the right to keep and bear arms for all law-abiding families, and we encourage you to find out about the laws governing use of deadly force in your state and follow them to the letter. And, of course, don't forget to follow the rules of safety and common sense whenever you're carrying a firearm to protect the ones you love. What's the story this week, Colonel? Well, one employee at a George Webb restaurant in Milwaukee is undoubtedly glad that one of her co-workers owns and carries a gun. The woman was cooking behind the counter when a man walked up to her and slugged her in the face, giving her a concussion. After the injured cook stumbled away, a colleague emerged from another area of the restaurant, pointed a gun at the assailant, and directed him to leave. Surveillance cameras recorded the incident, and police disseminated the clip to help find the suspect. Thanks, Colonel. This type of unprovoked violence is happening more and more these days, and I suspect it will get worse before it gets better. It all started in Europe about 10 years ago and was called the Happy Slapping Game. But now here in America, it has morphed into something called the Knockout Game. It became popular a few years ago when young teenagers would pick out an adult to attack and then casually walk up to them and sucker punch them in the face. The goal was to render them unconscious with one punch. In some cases, they would even kick the unconscious victim as they lay on the sidewalk and even take selfies of them while standing over the victim. Quite a few people have been seriously injured, put into comas, and several have actually died as a result of these types of attacks. But how can you defend against crazy acts of violence like this? Here are a few handy self-defense tips you can follow to minimize the danger of becoming a knockout victim. 1. When you are around people you don't know, especially when in transitional spaces like parking lots and sidewalks, always operate at a heightened state of awareness. Check people out from a distance, and if you see anything that makes you feel threatened or uneasy, Leave the area. 2. When you walk past people, keep them in your peripheral vision. Many times attackers will glance over at you and then look around the area to ensure no one is watching before they launch their attack. Watch for these nonverbal cues and respond appropriately when you see people with nefarious intent. And 3. When walking past people on a sidewalk or a hallway or in a parking lot, give them a little space. Don't let them get close enough to play the knockout game. And 4. Don't be afraid to make brief eye contact just so people know you are aware of their presence. You are sending the message, I see you and I hold you accountable. Many times this is all it takes to ward off an attack. I understand that we shouldn't have to worry about people like this, 
But the sad reality is that this type of craziness happens and we need to be aware of it and take precautions. Fortunately for the victim in this story, there was a co-worker with a staunch warrior mindset and he successfully intervened to bring this story to a happy ending. And did it exactly right. Okay, folks, welcome back to the Home Defense Show. This is your host, Skip Coriel. Gabe Suarez, love the man, love his attitude. Uh, that guy is a warrior, a, a renaissance warrior. Very well read, very educated, very coherent. Awesome, awesome guy. We will have him on again, I promise you. One thing I forgot to uh, tell you in segment one. Book four of the God Virus series, book four in the conclusion, titled The Blind Man's Rage, is now on Amazon.com. It is for sale on paperback and in Kindle. So you just go to Amazon.com, search on Skip Coriel, The Blind Man's Rage. It'll pop right up there, and you can go ahead and get that and find out what exactly does Uncle Rodney do? Does the blind man win? Does Uncle Rodney win? We will find out. Here, let me go ahead and just read uh, the excerpt from the back cover. Jared Thompson, a.k.a. the blind man, has taken over much of America. But General Rodney T. Branch, commanding general of the Shadow Militia, continues to thwart him at every turn. Despite having overwhelming air and ground superiority, the blind man and his forces cannot quite deliver the knockout punch to America. But now... The Shadow Militia has a plan that could save or doom the nation. Read the stunning conclusion of this final book in the God Virus series as Uncle Rodney and Jared Thompson clash in mortal combat, locked in a battle that only one can survive. So, hey, you're going to have to get the book to find out who wins, the good guys or the bad guys. I'll give you one guess. But the big question is, how does Uncle Rodney do it? That guy. <laughs> Uncle Rodney's my hero. I'm going to miss him so much. Oh, I'll miss him so much. We just got a few minutes left here, but we were talking about hunting in segment one. And I remember reading something from Jim Cirillo. Jim Cirillo, so he died a few years back, but he was on the original New York stakeout unit. And it was a job where they would go into high crime areas to retail places like, you know, 7-Eleven, any place that had been robbed uh, a high number of times where they knew the bad guys were coming back to rob again. So uh, Jim and the stakeout unit would go in there and they would uh, set up, they'd hide, they'd wait for the bad guys to come in, they'd pop out, you know, drop the gun police and then there would be a shootout and they would kill the bad guys but one of the things that uh, Jim says in his book the name of the book is Jim Cirillo's Tales of the Stakeout Squad it says Cirillo and Allard were both hunters out of all the necessary attributes and enthusiasm for hunting was what Lieutenant Brady most valued when selecting new men they have the judgment and patience the infinite patience that the job requires. And he is so, so right. When you are out hunting, 99.9% .9 of the time, you're sitting there, you're waiting, you're not moving, you are rock statue, stone, marble, granite still. Because if you move, the deer that you can't see sees you and you never see him, ever. Uh, but there's another aspect uh, to that as well. Uh, I think it's real important for concealed carry holders, anyone who carries a gun for personal protection or protection of their family and the ones they love, I think it's important that you know what it's like to kill something. I'm not suggesting you go out and, and kill a human, uh, but I am suggesting that you go out and shoot a deer or a rabbit or a squirrel or whatever. You know, because quite frankly, people have grown very, very squeamish here in America. Uh, even hunting is under attack because it's not politically correct. 
uh, you know, killing poor little Bambi, uh, you know, little thumper, you know, how can you possibly do something that cruel? Uh, listen, it, it's an animal. Uh, it's not like you and I, uh, although some of the people I look at, I, I wonder. But, you know, if you can't kill a rabbit, how are you going to kill a human being? If you pass out at the sight of blood, if you can't gut out a deer, uh, how, how are you going to kill a human? You know, uh, you know uh, Gabe Suarez and I, we were talking about that hesitancy that just seems to be rampant in our society today. Uh, you know, it's okay to kill people sometimes. It just is. I mean, we don't want to do it, but it's okay. And if you can't, uh, you know, shoot a squirrel, how are you going to shoot a human being? You know, I remember the first rabbit I ever shot. I was with my dad. And I think I was like 14 years old, uh, which is you had to be 14 back then to hunt with a gun. And, you know, I, I shot that that rabbit, it was running through the snow, and I put the bead on the rabbit, shot. And, of course, anyone with any experience knows a rabbit running, full deflection, you have to lead that rabbit. Well, so I didn't lead the rabbit, and I blew its back legs off. And this poor little rabbit, you know, you know, just whimpering away, and, you know, it's dragging itself along on its... A front with his front paws, you know, and it and it climbed into a hollow stump, and my dad <laughs> had to had to dig into that hollow stump and uh, go after the rabbit. I think the rabbit even bit him, but uh, you know he he pulled out the uh, the rabbit and twisted its its head and you know wrung its neck. And of course I'm crying because oh I hurt this poor little rabbit, you know. You know, four years later, I'm in the Marine Corps, you know, surrounded by, uh, you know, sadist drill instructors. And, uh, you know, I think it kind of helped prepare me <laughs> just a little bit for Marine Corps boot camp. But you know what? You got to get toughened up uh, a little bit. Uh, I really think we are way too far away from our food source. Uh, you go to the store, you buy it in cellophane, and most kids don't even know where it comes from. McDonald's hamburgers, where do they come from? They come from cows, okay? That sausage egg McMuffin, chickens and pigs. You know, but I think if you can go out there and just do some hunting, it changes your whole attitude. It gives you more of that warrior mindset, uh, you know, helps you tap into those predatory instincts that are, they're inside you, uh, lying latent and dormant, and you need to wake them up. So that when, uh, you know, the wolf comes a knocking, you can start rocking and you can put that wolf down. If you can't wring a chicken's neck or cut off a chicken's head and, and skin it and gut it out and cook it and eat it, then, hey, what good are you? You got to be tough if you're going to take out the bad guy. All right. Well, hey, I've probably grossed a few people out on that one, but, you know, that's the way that it is. I mean... You just got to get tough, folks. You got to get tough. It's a tough world out there. So I've got a couple hours here. I'm going to head on out there and I am going to, uh, you know, see if I can shoot Bambi's dad or Bambi's mom. I'm not picky. First one that walks up of decent size, it's going down for the count. Don't forget, go on Amazon.com. Check out The Blind Man's Rage. Pick up a copy of that. I know you're going to like it. You're going to love it. You're going to want some more of it. But you can't have it because that's the last one in the series, book four of The God Virus. Okay, folks, that about wraps it up for this week's episode of The Home Defense Show. Until next week, remember your purpose in life is to find something greater than yourself and serve it. Always remember, God, family, country, in that order. It's important how you live, but it's equally important how you die. Your family and the ones you love need your protection, so train, always train, stay alert, stay alive. Until next week on the Home Defense Show, this is your host, Skip Coriel. God bless you, God bless your family, and God bless America. Thank you for joining us this week on The Home Defense Show. Now, get out there and protect the ones you love. We'll see you next week with more of the best in home defense. Bye-bye, boys! Have fun storming the castle!